hello there, and welcome to Manny Cat Doll Zone. It's, uh, it's been a good minute. I got caught up in a new job. I got caught up in, like, different hobbies as what tends to happen in, like, spring-summer months. And it's con season. It's still technically con season as of the time recording this little intro bit. Because I got, I'm going to CT GamerCon on the 18th and 19th. And guessing on how long this is going to take, I think... It'll be well past that by the time I get to posting this video. Around this time last year, I was working on Phantom and getting real hype about Monster High Dolls, and now it's kind of worn off. I mean, it'll probably be like a sleeper cell sort of interest, where like at some point it's gonna skyrocket back into the front of my brain. But right now, I'm not really feeling it. I am, however, interested in doing my resin dolls right now. Specifically, a new type of them. Because as of now, I have a cat, rabbit, and dog doll that all have the same hands and feet. They're little cloth body dolls, and I got the idea, ironically enough, from thinking, Oh man, I want to do doll customizing, but I also want to make my own dolls. And I was thinking, oh, I could do the ball jointed dolls. Th never mind, that's way too much work. The cloth body dolls. And that was my hyper focus, like, two years back. They were supposed to be debuting in my first con of the year in 2020, and that didn't work. But they debuted in this terrific con back in August, and they actually did alright. I mean, like, they were pretty expensive, so people kind of shied away from them, but I sold two completed ones and one base one, so that actually was pretty good. Like, I was surprised they sold it all, given the price. And for the past couple months or so, I've been brainstorming, like, oh man, I could do, like, a pig, I could do a sheep. A pig because I work with, like, pig-based products at my job. And I figure, oh, that'd be cute if we had this little pig mascot sitting in the corner on our desk somewhere. And then with the sheep, it was just kind of like an evolution of like, okay, so if I have bunnies and dogs with the original cat thing, then I could very easily make like a sheep that have the same hoof hands and feet that this pig has. I also wanted to mess around with the idea of having like the wool being like acrylic yarn fluffed up, kind of how I did with Peach. Like, that sort of energy. I like that idea. So let's go ahead and watch as I figure out a prototype for these two dolls. Let's go! So as everyone knows, you can't make a mold without making the master copy of the thing in the first place. So with my absurd amount of Sculpey that I got for some reason, I made the pig head, the hoof hands and feet, and then the sheep head. The pig turned out really cartoony, and I'm actually pretty proud of how the sheep looks. Like, that's actually pretty legit looking sheep face. And I also scored the back of the head and where the wool would be, so later when I add, like, the flocking or the wool part of them, it'll stick a bit better. For the hands and feet, I put those in a Lego mold, which I need to get more Legos, because I had to resort to using plastic cups hot glued to a plate for the heads, which, in retrospect, may have been why the next problem happened. See, I was under the impression that the amount of trial size that I had would be more than enough to cover both the feet and the two heads. I got the feet, which was expected. I got the pig head, which is like, if I could only get one, I'd get the pig head. But I would like the sheep head, and... Well, at least the pig got done, and that's what matters. So from the ashes of the Sculpey figure that got utterly destroyed as I tried to yank it out of the mold, which happens to all of mine, which is going to be a problem in the future, I'll deal with it later, I managed to make a pig that matched the color idea I had in my head. Basically a wild pig, but with a little bit more of like the conventional pig in there. And to do that, I used a blush pink alcohol ink, and then I used some copper soap dye that I got a while ago. Just a little bit. Although that did take a few tries though, like I tried the blush pink first, then I tried to get that same color, get a tinge of orange in there, and then a little bit of gray, which did nothing. But that's okay, because I can use these guys in future stuff. And we can't forget the critters that I always make whenever I do these sort of resin projects. I always overestimate just a touch, and I'd rather overestimate than underestimate. It makes some really cool designs for my trademark sit and grin cats, or just in general for the little tiny cats that I just started making. The weird cat mold now has two of them in there, and I didn't want to leave that second one unfinished, so I added the green to finish that one off along with a few other lads. With the base all set, it was time to start painting. And I did that part live on stream, which you should check out by the way, 
because I do sometimes I do crafting, sometimes I do games, and sometimes I draw. This Saturday was a crafting week. All my streams are pretty chill. You get to be a little cat running around if you chat enough. Or sometimes I'll just go off about comics for five minutes, which kind of works out in these streams because I'm just in the middle of painting. My brain just goes 12 different directions. This part took a bit, maybe about two hours. It would have been two straight hours if it wasn't for the fact that I was also working on little dreamer figures on the side. I didn't want to waste paint, and they were standing right there getting ready to be painted, so it worked out. And then once everything was colored, I lined him off screen, and then I also sprayed them to heck with uh, sealant. I have this matte sealant that I found at a craft store. So now, he's ready for his body! Using some scrap t-shirt fabric in a bit of a pattern that I had already written down on there, I made the body for my little pig lad. That's the best part about these guys, because they have little stoppers on their legs to make sure the feet don't fall out, although I did have to add glue to the pig's neck, so retrospect. But it actually works out really good, because you don't have to be like 100% accurate with the body. This is just a skeleton that you put clothes on top of. As long as things are an approximate version of, like, proportionate, you should be fine. You're gonna cover it with clothes, stitches are okay, it's all good. Patterns can be a bit difficult though, because you might want the arms and legs to be thin, but the feet are usually so big and they got the little stoppers on it that they can be very hard to shove through, with, say, the arms of a jumpsuit. I made this in the middle of selling at GamerCon. I, see, I told you it would take forever to get this out. Like, that Saturday night I was like, I am making the pattern for the jumpsuit, and I'm going to use this cotton fabric, which I, I guess worked the other time with Phantom. Spoilers! It didn't fit at all! So I did it again in orange flannel and made the arms and legs significantly thicker. I gave this lad a Ken shirt, because apparently Ken clothes can fit these guys, and you just gotta stump it out a little bit. Like, chop off the really thin arms, or take off like half a pair of pants or something. The shirt was gonna be an undershirt underneath the overall, so it didn't have to be pretty. Getting the coveralls on was a bit of a struggle still, but after some working off camera, he was all good. I actually like how he turned out. I mean, the head's a bit smaller than I would have liked because I'm so used to like the cat, rabbit, and dogs being a little bit top heavy, but for my first try at a pig, it actually turned out pretty nice. I'm not 100% vibing with the prison coveralls, but I feel like the orange is enough to kind of give off that vibe. This little dude make a wonderful addition to my corner of the workplace. So that's the pig done. Fantastic! I just gotta get more molding material to get the sheep and maybe a cow later? Who knows? But I'll save that for the next video that I am not giving a time frame for because the last time I did that I skipped three months rather than one. 
I gotta build up my resin doll stock just a bit, though, because I did actually sell pretty good over at CT GamerCon. I sold at least four of them collectively, and I got some that were purchased through my Etsy that also knocked down the numbers a little bit. Which is just a very, very long way of saying there's probably gonna be more videos and it'll probably be of these guys. So stay tuned for that. Thanks to whoever is still here and still subscribed. Uh, I know I was gone for quite a while. Thank you for sticking it out. I'll see you guys in the next video when I actually have a sheep. So help me God, I will mold that as soon as I can. Have a good day.